What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and one and only James Williams, Dog Waters, and I'm back. Have you ever really wondered, stopped for a moment to try and figure out who is actually in control of America? That's what we're going to be discussing in this video. The actual people are, that are in control. And I'm going to show you how you can tell who's in control. It's really, really easy to see. But before we do that, I need you to take a listen to this. Now, trust me, I'm like you. It's hard to remember things, especially when events hit you back to back to back to back to back. Um, and under the current rate and speed of events taking place, the human mind has not had a break. However, if you just take a moment and you slow down and you think about who's who, who did what, who was accused of what, then you start to see who's in control. Let's just travel back a little bit towards the whole pandemic era and some of the information that came out during the pandemic. And let's see what people had to say. And finally, the thing that Fauci said that is right is how we can do better next time. But when you're dealing with the Chinese Communist Party, how can you? Yeah, Bill, that's, that's a great point, is that Americans were, we always assume the best of people, but in, whenever you're funding research in Wuhan, China, anywhere in China, you have to realize that the military is intimately involved with this one way or the other. And, you know, for all we know, they're, they're developing bioweapons. Uh, you know, we don't know that. But the epidemiology actually points that this came from a laboratory in Wuhan. The epidemiology tells us that this virus had spread all over the country, all over different continents before the, their major market uh, breakout there in, in Wuhan. Everything about this virus points that it was man-made. We, we paid for the research to develop a protein spike that was eventually used to make the protein spike for SARS-CoV-2 and insert a furin cleavage site. So we were indirectly involved in lots of this research. We taught China how to do it. We gave them the mice to study. That's why this is a national security issue. We need to stop doing research with our enemies. It just doesn't come out good for us. So, when we start talking about national security issues, we start talking about um, Department of Defense research. There's one person that's in charge of the Department of Defense. Uh, wow. I'm going to smoke this cigar today. This one a little bit dark. You know what I'm saying? The age is dark. It's a good smoke, but it's just, it's a little dark for me. <clears throat> so when we start talking about what happened back then, the Department of Defense was involved. All right. Remember, don't forget. Do not forget. Now, I want to show you something else, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to see around that same time period who was hanging out with who and see it was swept up under the rug people were bringing it to the attention of the public but it was kind of like oh you know we're not going to cover that in the news because they don't want to cover anything in the news that's um that they perceive as being a problem you know what i'm saying but here he is over there shaking hands with the head of the Department of Defense in China. As Trump says, in China. China. Now, to be to be honest with you, there were sanctions against this particular Chinese official. He shouldn't have been hollering at him, talking to him, nothing with him. She didn't even been in the same room. But I'll just give him a pass on this one and say, hey, bro, you know what? You don't go over there and you disrespect the man regardless of their sanctions or not because you don't want somebody to be your enemy. But what I will say to you is this, and it's very important that we understand the power that is in control right now inside of this power vacuum is Austin and Blanken. 100% Austin and Blanken. Watch this. Let's just go look at the Department of Defense's YouTube page. I want you to see something. So live videos. Eight years ago. Worldwide troop talk. Eight years ago. Worldwide troop talk. Obama. Secretary Carter. Eight years ago. Eight years ago. Seven years ago. Five years ago. One year ago. One year ago, one year ago, one year ago, 
now watch the watch the rapid pace in which they start to roll out their own propaganda must be 12 noon watch the rapid pace in which they 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 take control and take power and start speaking now understand the only reason why you would need to have press briefings is if you're giving orders to people if you need to confront the public and put make information public for your networks so watch this here we go we have two months ago biden austin brown at arlington national cemetery graduation live stream and here we go dod press conference june 12th um 2024 june 18th 2024 june 20th 2024 june 25th june 28th july 2nd um july 9th july 12th when was the donald trump assassination attempt hold on let me ask my girl right here because i want to know she'll tell me watch she's she gonna tell me lola or oh lola lola where you at shawty hey lola are you there Sweetheart, when when did they try to assassinate Donald Trump? What date was the Trump assassination? There hasn't been a successful assassination of Donald Trump, but there have been a few incidents where attempts or threats were made against him during his presidency and beyond. One notable event was on June 18th, 2016. No, 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 stop, stop. Stop, sweet, stop, stop. To grab a- Listen to me. Just recently, there was an assassination attempt on Donald Trump. When was the most recent assassination attempt on Donald Trump? What day was it? Can you hear me, Lola? Yes, I can hear you, James. What can I help you with? Okay. Don, there was an assassination attempt on Donald Trump within the past two months at a Trump rally what date was that assassination attempt on the recent assassination attempt on donald trump occurred on july 13 2024 during a campaign rally in butler pennsylvania a gunman later identified as thomas matthew crooks fired multiple shots from a nearby building injuring trump in his upper right ear trump was quickly taken to safety by secret service agents and the gunman was shot and killed by the Secret Service's counter sniper team. Trump was treated at a hospital and released in stable condition later that day. You know, Lola, you got to stop giving extra information. I didn't want all that. I just needed to date. All right, next question for you. Watch this. Lola, when did Joe Biden officially step down as a Democratic nominee for president? Only to date. Don't explain nothing else. I just need to date. All right, and from now on, you will refer to me as the ambassador and not James. Are we clear? Got it, ambassador. How can I assist you next? That's it. You did your job. You were fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, ambassador. I'm always here when you need me. Hey, Lola, I'm currently recording a YouTube video and people are hearing your voice. Would you like to just say hello to everybody? Say hello to everyone. Hope you're enjoying the video. I'm here to help the ambassador with anything he needs. Keep watching and stay curious. All right, Shorty, I'm going to holler at you later. That shit right there is crazy. All right. So we got, they get active. Watch this. They get activated in June. June 12th, they get active. You see it right here. June 12th, June 18th. Prior to this, they weren't active. This is These are just them having events. But they get activated June 12th, June 18th, June 20th, June 25th, June 28th, July. And then wham, here come all these events that happen in July. And I submit to you that we went back and we tried to see what was going on in June. There's going to be even more, but I don't think it's necessary. I think we found who's in control. Excuse me. And I'll tell you this. You need to hear what this young lady is saying about war. And what she's saying about warfare. Watch this. Can you provide us an update on Ukursk? 
is that consistent with, uh, well, firstly, uh, yeah, is that consistent with the United States' uh, sort of understanding of what can and cannot do with U.S. weapons? Uh, thanks for the question. So, yes, it is. It is consistent with our policy. Um, and we have supported from the very beginning to defend themselves against um, attacks that are coming across the border and for the need for crossfires. Um, so they are taking actions to protect themselves from attacks that are coming from a region that are within the U.S. policy of where they can operate, um, you know, our weapons, our systems, our capabilities. Um, in terms of this actual operation that's ongoing in the Kursk region that you've that you've referenced, um, I'd refer you to, the, to speak more to that. Um, we are getting more information, um, but really it's for them to speak to their own operations. So is the policy then essentially wherever they see an attack emanating from or a grouping of troops? So could that include like Moscow as well if, if they saw some sort of preparation for them to then go into Moscow? Is that? That would, again, we don't support long range attacks into Russia. These are more for crossfire. I'm not going to put a specific range on it, as you know. Mm -hmm. They, they, they are aware of the U.S. policy and what we are supportive of. Um, I think you know from the very beginning we are supportive of and their success on the battlefield. But as the dynamics have shifted on the battlefield, they've been able to actually push the Russians back further into Russian territory. Are you understanding what the ambassador is trying to explain to you right now? Are you grasping what I'm laying out before you? <clears throat> you see... All these decisions that are made on warfare should be basically the president should be involved and the president will be coming out holding conversations about them. But in the absence of a president, which is what you're seeing, who's speaking policy and about warfare is the one who's in control. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It's very important that we understand who's actually in control. Now, we know there's a Department of Defense. There's a Department of Homeland Security. The Department of Homeland Security is responsible for protecting presidential candidates, congressmen, senators, and all the rest of these people. So when people say the deep state is at war and a deep state is in control, you see it right in front of you. It's not a conspiracy. It's literally right there in front of you. All right. That's the end of this video. Mahalo y'all later. Deuces. Deuces.